And we're back once again. It is Inside Sports along with Pop Culture Cosmos. It's Gerald Glassford coming right back at you here. But you can't do anything really inside sports without the main man of inside sports. It is Charles Smith Jr. What's up, my friend? Hey, what's up? You know, this is always my favorite time of the year. Well, you know, the uh, here we got the NHL playoffs are about to start. It's just for this next six weeks or however long it takes, it's just pure bliss every single every single night. Uh, I've got my picks in. I've been watching all year. And unlike a lot of fans, you know, I do watch actually all the teams play. So when it comes down to these moments, you guys can trust my uh, prognostication. 50% of the time, I'm right every time. I know there's a lot of money riding on it in here in Vegas, and there's also with sports betting now, I don't want to say running rampant, but sports betting being legalized all around the country per se, it is something that a lot of other bookies and, and casinos are going to get into in the future, if not already. So there is going to be a lot of money riding on what's going on in the NHL playoffs. But I want to start first with the Western Conference because I'm going to save the Eastern Conference for last because there's an obvious question there that I don't want to ask right yet. But the Western Conference still has a plethora of really good teams, really strong teams that are coming out of the Western Conference. Let's go with Calgary and Colorado. Your opinion on what's going on with that series. Look to me so far during the course of the season that Calgary – they they're really a strong team overall. Uh, really a, a you know a nice way as far as they, how they closed out the season. But Colorado, I I don't foresee them giving them too much of a a chance here as far as at least in the first round because the, you know during the course of the season Calgary had their way with Colorado. Yeah, they did. Calgary won the season series uh, three games to nothing. One of the games did go into uh, did go into overtime. But uh, the problem is with Colorado. They pretty much, uh, they're an up and coming team. They don't have the depth beyond their top line, you know, anchored by Gabriel Landeskog to really, I think, go deeply into the playoffs. Now, Calgary, though, there's been an interesting little trek here with Calgary because we look back to the 2014 15 season when you had, you know, Johnny Goudreau and Sean Monahan and uh, Mark Giordano, all those guys, and they make the playoffs. Bob Hartley, their head coach, is named Coach of the Year. Then the next year, they miss the playoffs. Hartley is fired. <laughs> then they make the playoffs. Then they miss the playoffs again last year. And then this year, they finish with the best record in the conference. So, I, you know, <laughs> I would say that uh, the smart money would have to be on Calgary here. But we'll see what they have. One thing, they do have the goaltending looking to be solidified with Mike Smith in the net right now. It's going to be probably Simeon Barlamov going in the net for uh, for the Colorado Avalanche. but. Smith has kind of had an up and down career. I'd say you could look at his career and almost say that his career in net kind of uh, mirrors the way that the Calgary Flames have gone over the past four or five seasons. But I trust he'll be ready. And I think Calgary has a lot more, a little bit more grit when it comes down, especially with Matthew Kachuk emerging as one of the supreme agitators in the league. That's the kind of things that you need in the playoffs to really put a burr under the saddle of the other team. And well, Colorado, though, I like uh, I like what they're doing, but they're just not quite there yet. So I'd have to say Calgary, probably in five or six games, I'd say, in this series. I'm going to say Calgary in no more than five. It may be even possibly a sweep. So it could be a, a full season sweep over Colorado. Like you said, they're just not there yet, but the future is high in Colorado. I think they are a team on the rise, but it's just going to take maybe another year or two until they really reach that upper echelon of the NHL. But yes, they are, you know, they've got a lot of nice young talent. So let's see if they can go ahead and go forward in coming seasons because, and this is just, it's good for them to get the, this little taste of the NHL playoffs for now. But yeah, I, I don't see them going far when it comes to Calgary. And yeah, it just it, it doesn't look like it's going to be a pretty good matchup at all. But there are other great matchups in the Western Conference. And I'll, I'll tell you what, well, let's go with San Jose and Vegas. These two <laughs> teams, especially here for us here in Las Vegas, we're still excited. Not quite the season we had last year here in Las Vegas, but still with the Vegas Golden Knights, they're still a team to be reckoned with. 
not quite as strong from what I was observing most of the season. Overall, they were kind of all over the place, especially after the calendar started for 2019. They would go on a series of wins. They would go on a series of losses, just really up and down, so to speak. Your thoughts on the San Jose-Las Vegas matchup here. San Jose has been pretty strong, but they both match up fairly evenly with each other, and it represented itself in the course of the season. So uh, it looks like a very good good matchup to be in a quite a bit of a toss-up, but your thoughts on San Jose and the Las Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah, I think this may be uh, the most, maybe the most exciting series of this round just because of the style of the two teams. You know, in the regular season series, they did split it two and two. Now, the one thing is that you can look down the stretch, which I talk about it's not how you start, it's how you finish, but San Jose, the last 10 games, they finished three, six, and one. Uh, Vegas only finished three, five, and two. So seemingly not going really in the right direction. But I think come, you know, come playoff time, things kind of tend to uh, straighten out. I think Vegas will be ready. San Jose is going to be ready. The one thing for San Jose is that the whole Eric Carlson, Brent Burns on the blue line experience, that whole experiment did not really go as planned. Even when they were both healthy, they were not really ever the juggernaut that everyone kind of thought they would be. So that could be a problem. And honestly, I'm going with, uh, we look at the experience at the most important positions. You've got to take, you got to give it to uh, the Sharks on the blue line because, so, you know, Brent Burns and Eric Carlson, that's just the way it is. That's the edge there. Uh, as far as the forward group, you know, you could, you could talk about Pavelski and talk about uh, Logan Couture, Joe Thornton, but still I like the depth of the forwards of the, Vegas Golden Knights a little better. And then in net, I think I'll take the season Marc-Andre Fleury over Martin Jones, who's Martin Jones has been kind of iffy this year and hasn't necessarily come up big. So I'm going with Vegas to go ahead and take this first round series over the Sharks. And, you know, Vegas, they're going to be moving and shaking here. So I think they've got another deep playoff run in them. I'm going Vegas. They've got Max Patch already, remember, this year. They lost James Neal, but they added Max Patch. That's kind of, uh, you know, nothing against Neil, but they did get an upgrade in that whole deal. So, hey, let's go ahead and go with Vegas in this round. The key component for me as someone who actually got to, got to attend a game close to the end of the season and also knows how expensive and how vaunted those tickets are here in Las Vegas being some of the highest price playoff tickets in the NHL, you know, with people offering well over $1,000 for them and getting them per se, but with the team itself, the key component is Mark andre Fleury. Will he be healthy enough going into the playoffs because he missed several games close to the end of the season? He came back just very late in the season, and you know, the, uh, to me, it just will he be sharp enough to be able to handle everything in goal? They do have the experience, though, from a finals run last year, so hopefully that can take him at least through this round. I'm actually going to go ahead and agree with you. I didn't last year bet on the Golden Knights. I actually thought the Kings would take that series, and boy, was I proven wrong. I'm not going to make that same mistake twice. I'm going to go ahead with Las Vegas Golden Knights in the first round over San Jose, although, like you said, I think it will go seven games. Yeah, this is going to be a good one. This is going to be probably the maybe the best series overall in this first round of playoffs. It's definitely in the Western Conference, but – yeah, this is going to be a doozy, a lot of scoring. Uh, there's going to be some, you know, just everything you want is going to be in this series. So this is the one to watch. But yeah, Vegas, definitely. Now your thoughts on Nashville and Dallas, the Stars versus the Predators. Nashville had, I don't want to say it's under the radar, good season and all that. But when you score 100 points and nobody's really talking about you, that tells me you're a little bit under everyone's radar. I still think they're a team that should be thought of a little bit higher than what a lot of people has perceived them to be. The Predators actually, over the course of what went on during the season, actually did manage to uh, win the season series over Dallas in the season series. But be that as it may, there's not too much difference as far as overall when it comes to their rosters. I just still – I have a feeling, though, Nashville – is a team that's primed to do some good things in the NHL playoffs. Yeah, I think so. And they made their run to the cup final a couple of years ago. But here's the thing with Nashville is that their season was a little bit indifferent. It started out a little indifferent. And then when they added Wayne Simmons at the trade deadline, everyone kind of thought that 
they would immediately take off, but they didn't. They still continued. It seemed like uh, he didn't really fit in or they were just still kind of finding their way. But when I look at them, you look at how they finished the season, though, winning their last three games. They were 7-2-1 and one in their last 10. Now, when you look at uh, – you got P.K. Subban there on the blue line, and Wayne Simmons adds toughness up front. They've got – the scoring that they need. I think they've got the blue line. Then when you look at the good battle and goal, because you got Pecorini on one side, Ben Bishop on the other. But what you need in the playoffs to win a series, it comes down to the uh, grit, determination, and you got to be a certain level of nasty when it comes down to it to win these playoff series. As I always say, the playoffs are not a time for any player to start getting a jump on the Lady Bang Trophy for next year. That's the way it is. So I think in the grit department, not to mention experience, Nashville is uh, definitely has the edge over Dallas, who's kind of coming along. But Dallas is really kind of a finesse team. And Nashville, I think they have the grit to win this series. And I think it's going to get rough. It's going to get ugly. And that's going to play more into the hands of Nashville, even though Nashville does have skilled players. I'm not saying they're goon squad or anything like that. But Nashville, I think they have it. Uh, they're going to win this series. And in fact, I'm looking at maybe five games here. I don't truly give Dallas much of a chance to win this series. Wow. Wow. I'm going to go one more. I think it's going to be Nashville and six, but Nashville to me, I think will go ahead and close that on the road in Dallas on their home ice. I just think there is, like you said, experience, grit, toughness that I think is going to go a long way in the NHL playoffs, but we'll talk about that a little bit more here coming up here in a bit. And the last of the first round series is going to be, well, according to what the season had going forward on it, it you know, at the end, both at 99 points, both Winnipeg and St. Louis. And I know a lot of good fans out there from St. Louis that really enjoy what the Blues have done this year. They actually ended pretty good on a, a pretty good note. But your thoughts on the series I'm kind of leaning towards the Blues, uh, but I can easily see a lot of people thinking that, hey, with what kind of talent, I should say, that they have on the team, I could see a lot of people going the other way in Winnipeg, and you wouldn't be wrong either which way because those both those teams are just so evenly matched. Yeah, that, that's true they are. And then when you look in goal, again, got to look at the X factor of goaltending. Connor Hellebuck for the Winnipeg Jets, who had, kind of was not as dominant as we thought he'd be this year, even though he's okay. And then uh, coming out of nowhere, you know, Jordan Bennington for the, I almost said Chester Bennington, for, for the St. Louis Blues, but uh, being strong in that all year long. Uh, one problem here is Winnipeg has a prove-it-to-me player. And I've been watching them as they've come along for the last several seasons. And one problem is Patrick Laine. I've watched him over the past years. He's you a know, terrific, talented player, but he's in the playoffs. I know they hide injuries. When someone gets injured, they don't say anything. Even though you see some guy skating out there, he clearly has, you know, lateral movement is gone. He kind of turns like a battleship and stuff like that. But still, he's not on the – no one says he's injured. But Patrick Laine, and he's still young, so I don't know if I want to really put this rap on him too hard. But there have been times when I've watched him in the playoffs, and I think I hope he's injured and they're not saying anything about it because he really doesn't come through in the playoffs. He's a prove-it-to-me player for them. I like uh, I like St. Louis and what they've got. They've got a good veteran squad there. Winnipeg is coming along, but I think they're going to hit a bump in the road here. I'm going to take St. Louis to take this series, even though Winnipeg took the season series three games to one. But uh, I like the way that St. Louis is playing right now and finishing the series. I mean, finishing the season, they were 8-1-1 one, one in the last 10 games. They're obviously on track to do some good things. So I like St. Louis. I'm going to go with uh, the St. Louis Blues to go ahead and advance to the second round of the playoffs. I'm going to agree with you on that because of the almighty momentum going into the season as far as how it ended for the St. Louis Blues. Like you said, 8-1-1, one, and one, that's nothing to sneeze at. That's the way you really want to go into an NHL playoff format. So I agree with you that St. Louis is going to win it on their home ice in six games. I'm going to call it right now. So St. Louis, to me, is going to win it out in six games. I, like you said, not Chester Bennington, but still, you can't call him that. But you know what? He is playing very well on a high level, and you, you take that all the way, especially if you're riding with a hot player or whatnot. So, yes, I do see St. Louis going ahead and overcoming 
anything that Winnipeg throws at them in six games. And I tell you what, it's going to be a great time for everything going on in the first round of the Western Conference playoffs. But as it progresses forward, you then have all those other teams that go make it out of the first round. You have, like we both called St. Louis, we both called Nashville. In fact, we pretty much called it the same way. We did, St. Louis, yeah. Na- St. Louis versus Nashville, Vegas versus Calgary. I'm going to have you start off with Nashville versus St. Louis. Does that momentum for St. Louis keep on going to overcome what Nashville may throw out at them? That's you know, St. Louis and Nashville would be a heck of a series. That would just be that would just be crazy. And provided both teams are healthy, uh, I'm going to say that series will go seven games. I'm going to go ahead and call it in seven games. Uh, I, but I think Nashville, uh, you know, they're one of my two. I always pick a Final Four when it comes to the uh, with, to playoffs like this. Like the West will be represented by one of these two teams, or the East will be represented by one of these two teams. Nashville is one of my two to represent the West, so I would pick them in that series. Absolutely. I'm going to run that with you on that. Nashville, to me, has that grit, like we've talked about already a couple Mm -hmm. times with Nashville. I think that's going to have them prevail over St. Louis. And you're right, seven-game series could easily be something that is is an offering when it comes to St. Louis versus Nashville. And in the other, uh, I guess, what you would say, the semifinal, second round, semifinal, same thing when it comes to the NHL playoffs. You have the Vegas Golden Knights and some of the craziest fans that are out there. And I'll tell you what, also one of the best atmospheres in sports anywhere. It is just truly awesome. Maybe that's why the prices of the tickets are so high. But the <laughs> Vegas Golden Knights versus the Calgary Flames. You know what? Sorry, Golden Knights fans like myself because I root for them now. But Calgary, I think, has just got way too much to offer for what Golden Knights. They've just been too inconsistent. They used their speed last year in the NHL playoffs that to their advantage in every single round, and it just uh, finally caught up with them in the Stanley Cup as far as their, their speed they couldn't overcome as far as the physicality part of it. But I think at this point in time, Calgary is going to have too much talent across the ice to go ahead and matchup with the Golden Knights. So I see that one ending at five for the Calgary Flames. Yeah, well, you know what? Uh, just so your boys don't run you out of town there in Vegas, uh, they know that I've got their backs here. I'm going, I'm saying the Golden Knights are going to win that. So they advance, they both advance and it's the Golden Knights versus Calgary. I'm going with the Knights in that series to advance to what will be a fantastic conference final uh, with the Nashville Predators. And on that note, and you know what? Uh, that's awesome. I hope I'm wrong, and I hope you're right. Let's put it that way, because I am in here in Vegas. I just have that feeling when it comes to their season. I've just seen too much as far as the up and down. But you know what? Let's hope I'm wrong again, and you're right. But that leads into the Nashville Predators versus Calgary. Your call, my friend, first. What's going on as far as your thoughts when it comes to a – Western Conference Final of Nashville versus Calgary. Uh, Nashville. And, you know, you may get the idea that I don't really think that much of Calgary. That's not necessarily true. Or, or actually, in your case, in I'm here. sorry, the Vegas Golden Knights. So it would be Nashville versus the Vegas Golden Knights. So I apologize. That. I'm thinking myself already. What's what's up with that? Well, I would take – that That would be a tough one. I would have to see where the teams are at that point, honestly, to call it. See who's been – how teams have been playing, how the goaltenders have been playing who's the healthy team, because that's going to come down to incremental differences. With the, If Nashville and the Golden Knights both make it to the conference final, there's going to be some very subtle things that, you know, I'd like to, I'm going to need to really take a look at. I'm not really trying to cop out here, but that's. But you got to choose one. Gotta, you got you to gotta choose one. <laughs> you have to choose one now. That's why they call us, you know, we're playoff I'd preview. Have to say, right. I'd have to say the, uh, I would take, I'm tempted to take uh, Nashville. I want to take the Knights. I don't know. I'd have to say Nashville. I don't have to say Nashville. Okay, Nashville. well, I'll tell you what. That's my pick, too, even though it is with against Calgary. Right. I'm going to go ahead with the grit and experience that Nashville already has. I was going to say, instead of say, putting the proverbial gun to it, I was going to put the proverbial you know, check into the boards for you there, You know, as far as you had to make a pick. So. If that's the case, 
Your choice is Nashville. I am going to go ahead and agree with you on that. I think Nashville versus Calgary or the Golden Knights, I just think there is just too much experience. They had, I don't want to say well, like a year off per se, but they did have time to reflect, retool, but they still have a lot of that experience there and toughness that I think uh, is going to be able in this point in time in the NHL playoffs to have them prevail. So I think that's a great call. Both you and I are thinking, ah, great minds think alike there. So that's that's uh, that's good when it comes to, yeah. Oh, one thing I wanted to add before we, move on to the east though is that you know hockey i talk about is such a game of just chemistry because if we look at colorado and their resurgence over the last couple of years really the only thing they did was get rid of their best player when they shipped out matt duchene that was really the the best thing that they could do for their team and in the east you have a similar situation with the new york islanders uh all they did in this past off season really was let their best player john tavares walk in free agency and then all of a sudden, they're a playoff team. So it's, and I'm not really going to rain on those two guys, but it's a matter of what the chemistry is on a team, as opposed to the just outright talent on the team. But how well do those guys work together? And that was the thing that impressed me most about the Golden Knights last year. A lot of these teams, so you just see that, you know, everybody wants the number one draft picks. So we trade, get this guy, get that guy. No, really, the guys that you have, when they're playing well as a unit, because hockey is the consummate team sport, that always wins out over you know a lot of individual talent on on other teams. Sort of like an addition by subtraction is what you're, I think you're trying to say, correct? Exactly. Yes, but uh, yeah, a little bit, a little there bit different. Go. But yeah, that's the, that's the thing. Absolutely. Well, sometimes, it, like you said, it is all about chemistry. But right. to me, also as well, when it comes to good hockey, is avoiding mistakes in your own side of the ice. I right. have seen over the course of this season, a lot of teams, especially the Golden Knights as well, make a lot of mistakes on their own end of the ice. If you can avoid those turnovers on your end of the ice, you're setting yourself up to be competitive and setting yourself up for a good chance of winning each round going forward if you don't you keep on making stupid penalties and you also go ahead and make those mistakes behind on your side of the ice you know what you're setting yourself up for an early loss and an early you know early dismissal out of the nhl playoffs neutral zone turnovers and turnovers within five to ten feet of your own blue line are killers oh absolutely i've seen it already like i said a few times this season and they're they're just they're aggravating for fans out there. They're head scratchers. You know, why are these guys making the mistakes that they are? It just seems to happen. And you know what? If you avoid those type of deals, if you avoid those type of mistakes and errors, you will go ahead and go far in the NHL playoffs, rest assured. But our choices uh, actually comes down to Nashville when it comes to it. We both picked Nashville to go to the Stanley Cup finals in the Western Conference and we're just, you know, I cannot wait to go ahead and see what, like you said, is going to be just a a action packed Western Conference playoff uh, playoff, you know, as far as the rounds are concerned, and a Western Conference championship. Who is going to get that? We think it's going to be the Nashville Predators. Check out what's been going on with the Pop Culture Cosmo Show and the PCC Multiverse. That is by far my favorite because it's also character driven and the stakes are high and there's much more of a mystery and intrigue to it. A game like Wolfenstein, which people are saying are one of the most socially important video games of the past 10 years. Catch our shows on radio worldwide seven days a week or at any time on Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts or on over 30 more podcast outlets. Now in the Eastern Conference now, there's a lot going on there, but <laughs> there is one heck of a team that's out there that just totally dominated from start to finish. I guess we'll go ahead and start with them. Tampa Bay versus Columbus. Does Columbus have any type of chance at all? Well, I think in this series, well, to answer your question directly, the answer is no. But, <laughs> you know, there is a reason why they play the game, why they play the series. But the question in this one, I would say it's more like, not whether or not Tampa Bay will win this series, but the question is simply sweep or no sweep. That's the only question in this series. I know this may ruffle the feathers of Blue Jackets fans, all 22 of them, but, you know, 
Hey, that's what it comes down to. Tampa Bay is loaded. They're ready. And I think ever since the disappointment of the cup, the run to the cup final in 2015, they've been building toward this moment. And now everything has, you know, the same coach, the same group of players. They've just been, been getting progressively better. And I think, you know, this year, uh, you know, they, they showed they are the best team, got the most wins, regular season wins in the history of the league. So here we go. Tampa Bay, I think they're primed and ready to go. Unfortunately, Victor Hedman did get a, an injury uh, later in the season, but I think he's supposed to be available for the playoffs. So uh, they should be fine that way. But yeah, I'm going ahead and taking Tampa here. I don't see any reason not to. And I see them as dominating too in this first round. Uh, to me, it's going to be a sweep as well. But the one thing I want to ask you before we get on to the next uh, matchup, when it comes to Tampa Bay, I see a parallel in the year that the Golden State Warriors won the actual most games in the regular season. They beat the vaunted Bulls team from the 90s in doing so. But that was the only year that they lost in the finals to LeBron and the Cavs. So I That's ask true. you, were they too – do you think at any point in time, do you think they might have been too focused on you know dominating so much in the regular season – that it might reflect poorly on them come playoff time. Yeah, you know, I know exactly what you're talking about because I've seen that happen to uh, many teams in different sports, and that is they chase the record, and then by the time they get to the playoffs, they kind of exhale a little bit, and then before you know it, they get jumped on, by, pounced on by another team. But when I look at Tampa, I watch a lot of their games, and what I saw was there's something very fluid about them. So when the Bulls set their record of 72 wins, the thing is, they were just in a good groove. The Tampa Bay Lightning, they were in a good, just in a good rhythm, and that's why they won all those games. I don't think they were chasing. So I think they're ready for the playoffs. It shouldn't be a problem for them. I agree with you. I think they're going to go ahead and, and we'll do some good things in the NHL playoffs. How well? We're going to be discussing that here in a little bit. But first, I want to round off the rest of the first-round playoff matchups in the Eastern Conference. Let's go ahead and continue with Boston at Toronto. Two very solid teams. This one, to me, is a, a pretty good matchup in, a, in and of itself. The season series went to Boston, but I'm not sure that's going to be actually totally 100% reflective of what's being seen in the matchup. I think it's going to be very close. Your thoughts on Boston and Toronto and how they match up against each other? Well, I think what happened here was Boston, uh, Boston won the, series, the season series three to one, but Toronto, what they did, if we look at them, they finished the season three, four, and three in the last 10. They, lost, they have a three game losing streak going into the playoffs here. And one problem with Toronto, that when they opened the season, I think they won eight of their first 11 games. Everyone talks Stanley Cup. And for those here in the U.S. who may not know, Toronto is the center of the hockey universe. It just is. They've been waiting since 1967 to get to another cup final and to win the cup again. So as soon as they have those expectations, everybody jumped on board, and they've been at the forefront for the whole season, even though their season has been pretty up and down. One problem they had was during this past offseason, we talked about just one player leaving, Tyler Bozak was on their team for the last few years. He left and joined the St. Louis Blues here in the offseason, and now you see what they were able to do. But Tyler Bozak, to me, he was a spark plug for the – even though it may not have shown in all the stats, but he was a spark plug for the Toronto Maple Leafs. They don't have him. I think they missed that grit that he brought. Then we look at Boston. Boston, they have, you know, Patrice Bergeron. We know about, about, about Brad Marchand and, and David Krejci. We know about Zdeno Chara. They've got all the grit. They've got all that depth and experience, whereas Toronto is still trying to get there. And I think there's going to be a lot of disappointed fans in Eastern Canada when this series is over, because I think Boston, not only are they going to beat Toronto, but they're going to expose them in a few different ways. And they're going to really see how much work they still need to get done. I like the Boston forward group and really honestly look at Toronto's blue line. Who do they really have there to, you know, how stable is their blue line? And then the goaltending. We're going to really go with Freddie Anderson. I watched him out here when he played for the Ducks, you know, solid goaltender. But is he money? And I know all you Boston fans, you're saying, what about Tuka Rask? Because I know Boston fans get on Tuka Rask for what he has done in big games, and rightfully so. 
But I think Tuka Rask, and if he falters a little bit, which he's prone to do, I guarantee you Rask is going to have a game where you look at it and say, what in the world is he even doing starting in the NHL? But Yaroslav Halak, possibly, he's backing him up. He'll be able to come in. I like Boston to win this series. Uh, I see it Boston in five or six games in this series. And Toronto is going to have a lot of questions to answer when this is all done. I agree with you. Boston, I think, is probably at this point in time, if I had to pick one team behind Tampa Bay to be the second best team in the NHL, I think it's Boston. And I yeah. think they're, they match up very well with many other teams except for Tampa Bay. So at this point in time, I see them handling Toronto very easily in five games. I don't see them you know, needing any more time than that. The next matchup I want to talk to you about is the reigning champions, the Washington Capitals versus the Carolina Hurricanes. Things have not been looking as well as what was going to be thought of as far as Washington going doing a back-to-back. I don't think there will be a back-to-back in the distance for the Washington Capitals. But your thoughts on a first-round matchups? Do they at least get out of the first round facing the Carolina Hurricanes? Yeah, and the Hurricanes are a great story, finally making it back to the playoffs. And, you know, they've won three straight games to end the season. I, Washington, well, I think Washington, what happened was the first month or six weeks of the season, Washington clearly had a Stanley Cup hangover. You know, I, I think they all partied a lot during the summer. And it looked like coming in, they just couldn't get, uh, get things together. But they played some really good hockey down the stretch. They played good hockey over the past two or three months of the season. So at the end of the day, I think Carolina is a great story, but Washington, they are the, the defending champs. Now they were the reigning champs in the regular season. Now playoffs, they become the defending champions. They are the defending champions. They have the heart of a champion. And I think, yeah, they're going to take care of Carolina probably five games. I see it a little bit harder for them. I see it in six, maybe even seven. That's just because I don't think it's going to be an easy road for them at this point in time for them because they have not looked as good, uh, you know, in my opinion, all season long as what they did last year. I don't think they have that mojo as much as they did at this point in time last year, at least. So I think it's going to be a harder road, but I I do think they're going to go ahead and escape out of the first round against the Carolina Hurricanes. I don't see Carolina coming out on top in any type of scenario. But it is a good story for Carolina, and it's, it's good to see them winning once again. And last of the first-round matchups is New York Islanders versus Pittsburgh. And that's something I want to ask you. We talked about the almost the addition by subtraction when it came to the Islanders, but I see this as a really good matchup. I'm thinking I'm leaning Pittsburgh, to be honest with you. Uh, I just see a lot of good things when it comes to what's going on in Pittsburgh. And I think they're just going to be able to go ahead and pull it out in, I'm, I'm going to call it seven games. I think it's going to be an even matchup all the way. Your thoughts on the New York Islanders versus Pittsburgh. And like I said, seven games for me, but I could easily see it going the other way. Yeah, and I think this is one of those things that I think we'll agree on this as well, where uh, when this series is over, what, do, what you're going to do is look back at the series, and this is going to be a – coulda, woulda, shoulda for the New York Islanders. But the, the Pittsburgh Penguins, when you look at them, even in the regular season, the playoffs, there's always just these little moments with the Penguins where it, guys like Crosby, Patrick Hornquist, those guys like that, they always do something unexpected. And you, at the end of the game, you're, like, you're thinking, you know, they shouldn't have gotten that goal right then. They shouldn't have got that. This could have happened. That could have happened. Then they wouldn't have won. Then this would. But that's the way the Penguins are, and that's the way veteran teams are. And I would always say, when it comes to playing hockey at this level, it's really not about your overall talent. It's about the angles, it's the awareness, and it's the quickness in small spaces. And just your effective decision-making in just these very critical moments. And I think the Penguins have it over the Islanders as far as that goes. And also, Jake Gensel is proving that he's the real deal. He busted out last year, and everyone thought it might be a fluke, but then he scored over 30 goals this year. So... That's another rising star that they have to add to, you know, Phil Kessel and Sidney Crosby and Patrick Hornquist and Evgeny Malkin. And I could go on. Although it's hard for me to pick any team with Jack Johnson on the blue line to win a, to win a playoff series. But I'm going to go ahead and do it here. Pittsburgh, like you said, seven games. I would not at all be surprised 
if uh, the Islanders turn the table on them and win, but I'm going to say Pittsburgh at seven, just based on the experience and all the factors we talked about. Neither outcome would surprise me as well. Like I said, uh, but I think we're both leaning by the smallest of margins that, that Pitt, yeah. Pittsburgh's going to take it. So Pittsburgh, after they win that series, would meet up with the winner of the Tampa Bay Columbus series, which is going to be Tampa Bay. Do you see them putting up any type of fight, especially after what we think would be a hard, drawn-out series against the Islanders? Right. Uh, I'd say, I mean, lightning and probably six games. I still, I like the Penguins and their veteran presence where they won't allow the lightning to run wild. So the lightning are going to have a little bit of difficulty getting into that real good rhythm offense they like. Pittsburgh knows how to disrupt that. And that's about staying in passing lanes. It's about cutting off angles and things like that, which they'll do very well against Tampa. But at the end of the day, Tampa has just uh, too much overall skill and speed for the Penguins. So I would say Tampa. Tampa and six against the Penguins if they meet up. And then it goes as far as from what I'm seeing, we talked about both Boston and Washington moving on against each other. If that's the case, I see Boston, like I said, is to me the second best team in the NHL right now. I see them going ahead and ousting the champs if they meet up in the NHL playoffs. Your thoughts on a potential Boston-Washington matchup if that takes place? That is a tough one. Because remember, Washington, also there's the X factor of Braden Holt being goal. And, you know, he's played lights out when he needs to. And then with Boston, we've got, you know, Tuka Rask in goal, which I've talked about. He can have some really bad games sometimes. But uh, I'd say with Boston, you know, I could see Boston winning. This is going to be, again, one of the series like the, the Penguins and Islanders, if this series were to happen. But I still, I'd say Washington, too many X factors, too many intangibles for Boston. And I think they would win that series. I would take Washington to win that series against Boston if that happens. I kind of disagree with you on that. Like I said, I think Boston is going to be able to take it out in seven games, but it is going to be a tough, drawn-out series, Mm -hmm. which would leave either as fodder for the Tampa Bay Lightning, in my opinion, because Tampa Bay, again, would win it. This time, I think Tampa Bay would go ahead into the Stanley Cup, riding high off of a – I think they're going to get a little bit of challenge. I think, though, it'll be six games against whoever they match up with when it comes to Boston – or Washington, uh, but I think it's going to be, like I said, it's going to be in six games. I think that would probably be the uh, safest way to say it because I don't think it will get stretched to seven. I think it would be the toughest test that they have overall, in the, uh, but y- including possibly even the Stanley Cup. Right, and the only thing for Tampa is that they just have to be aware to not get frustrated. That's it, because sometimes uh, high-speed teams, high-scoring teams, when you – when they get bogged down, they can get frustrated and start taking a few chances that they shouldn't, maybe not being quite as, de- as responsible in their own zone as they should be because they're used to a lot more fruits of their labor when it comes down to it. So teams like Tampa are not used to winning games, you know, three to two, two to one and things like that. But that's what they'll have to do and realize that sometimes you're going to have to get out there and bust your butt for an entire game and nothing that you do shows up on the score sheet. That's just the way the playoffs go. So Tampa, I think they're, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. Anyone they meet, if they meet in the conference final, I'd say Tampa Band 6. There you go. There you go. Once again, I'm speaking to Charles Smith Jr. of Inside Sports. If you want to go ahead and uh, you know reach out to him with your thoughts on the NHL playoffs, go ahead and just reach out to him at the Inside Sports on the I've Twitter. Been out. There you go. There you go. Working out, getting all buff. But yes, at the Inside Sports on Twitter. Also, as well, you want to make sure you can, you know, if you want, you can go ahead and also ask them him a question. Ask him a question. Ask Chris Lardieri a question, or even ask us a question on Facebook, because Charles and Chris they're both together on Facebook at Inside Sports. But also, as well, you can reach out to us as well on the Pop Culture Cosmos. But that leads us into the Stanley Cup discussion. And to me, it's not going to be very much of a discussion because I think that Tampa Bay is going to have a harder time against Boston or Washington than whoever it is on the Western Conference they can put out. I think at this point in time, we talked about Nashville going all the way in the Western Conference against Tampa Bay in the Eastern Conference. Like I said, great minds are thinking alike on this. We just had no quarrel over who we think is going to go all the way on each side. 
But I think when all comes down to it, that it's not going to be very much of a contest. And I think Tampa Bay is going to go ahead and have probably the best NHL season ever by beating Nashville in five games. Yeah, I think so. And Nashville is probably the best team to match up with them in the cup final if that happens because of the style Nashville plays. No one is going to out finesse Tampa Bay. That's that's what I see. If you go out there and think we're going to just outscore them, that's not going to happen. The only way to do it is to drag them into kind of a dirty, gritty game to give yourself a chance. And I think Nashville is uh, best equipped to do that out of all the teams that come out of the may come out of the West. So, yeah, I've got Nashville. Uh, it's not Nashville, but I've got Tampa Bay winning the Cup over Nashville. It'll be a good cup final of contrasting styles, but at the end of the day, hey, there's going to be a parade in Tampa, and I think the lightning, they smell the roses for the first time since 2004. Hey, to me, like I said before, this is probably going to end up being the greatest season ever for a single team in the history of the league, and I think it all comes down to what type of party they're going to hold in tampa bay and parade and all that where they're going to line it up as far as the streets are concerned but like you said i do see them also as well becoming stanley cup champions for the first time since 2004 so it's going to be a great time for people in tampa bay and the florida area there because they're going to go ahead and win in five games as well i just i don't see nashville like you said even though they they probably are the uh the possibly the best team that could match up with them. I don't see them being that much of a deterrence. Like I said, for me, I think Boston is probably their best matchup. And even then, Boston doesn't have enough horses as far as be able to go ahead and put that out there on the ice to go ahead and match up with the, the folks over in Tampa Bay. They're just too loaded. They've got just too much depth and they can just throw too much at you, at you. And plus if they get injuries, they are, more apt to overcome them than any other team in the NHL. Right. They got, I mean, Braden Point came on this year, like, like gangbusters. So added to that forward depth that they had. So it's, yeah, they, they've got to win it. I'd say this easily the cup is theirs to lose, even though they've still got to get those 16 wins that they need to hoist that hallowed hardware. But yeah, I like Tampa this year. I agree with you on that. If you have any questions for Charles at the inside sports on Twitter or you can reach out to him inside sports on Facebook. You can also ask Chris Lardieri a question as far as the betting line and all that. And also what's coming up in the futures for both as far as the NFL is concerned. Always check with them there because they're the guys that are in the know when it comes to the NFL. Any last thoughts on the way out on the NHL playoffs or anything going on at inside sports? Well, you know, the thing is uh, at uh, inside sports and also official inside sports.com is the website. We have all the links there, but we're going to be stepping up as far as the NFL betting. This season, we have our NFL football talk show. And by the way, we're going to have a a show coming up here just after the uh, NFL draft and then regular season every week. We'll be getting our uh, betting tips out. We're also going to be joined by Jake Stevens, who's a veteran uh, broadcaster. He used to do work with ESPN, but he's going to be on there. I'll be picking the over-unders every week. Chris will be picking the underdog every week. And Jake is going to be picking the favorite every week. So you're going to have, at the risk of being doomed to a really bad place, where you're going to have the Holy Trinity. It sounds like it. Jake and Chris. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. That's something definitely to look out for, especially if you're a football fan and especially someone that's going to go ahead and is very interested in the the money lines and what's going on as far as betting in the NFL. you got to check out what's going on later this year. In fact, very soon, right after the NFL draft when it comes to the inside sports. Charles, it's been great having you. And I tell you, on the show, appreciate you taking the time talking NHL. Hey, anytime. I love hockey. And hey, April 10th is when it starts, even though April 10th is always special to me. April 10th, 1982, miracle on Manchester. LA Kings, first round of the playoffs, down five to nothing going into the third period against the vaunted, mighty Edmonton Oilers. They come back, win that five goals in the third period, win in overtime, and win that series, eliminating the Oilers, who in that season, Wayne Gretzky had 215 points in the regular season. Brings back the memories indeed. Well, Charles, it's just so awesome to have you on the show. You're talking everything great right here for the NHL playoffs. All the best to you and everything as well for Inside Sports.